Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 254. Today we're going to talk about the expansion, the first expansion to eminent domain. This is called Escalation. Uh, this came out recently, it was a Kickstarter uh, release, and I'll just go ahead and say up front, eminent domain is one of probably my top 10 games of all time. Uh, excellent game, I love it to death, I will never get sick of playing it, I don't think. Um, and this makes it better. <laughs> so um, let's just jump into all of the cool stuff that this adds to the game and then I'll come back and tell you more about it in the review. Okay, now I've got everything shuffled together with the base game from the expansion, so I'm just gonna kinda dive in and break everything apart here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna talk about is by far and away the best part of the game, um, but it's the, the best thing also to lead us into talking about the game. And so these are basically different uh, scenario cards here. And there's a nice good stack of these. Now what you can do is you can ever basically deal one out to people, deal people two, they they choose one, do a little bit of a draft, however you want. What this is going to do is give you different starting hand makeups here. So you can see this guy doesn't start with any produce or trade cards, but he also starts with two politics cards. The game gives you these extra politics cards. And then it gives you basically a starting technology and sometimes dictate to you the starting planet. Uh, so there's a new set of these here. Some of these will actually be, you know, prestige worlds, uh, different things. Some of these come with the, uh, you know, the little bonus icons on there. And so you can basically deal these out and there's a variety of different things here so um, you know like this one's really cool I haven't played with this one I really want to play with this one basically there's uh, six um, of these double time cards these are different technologies you can get but you can see you start with none of the basic cards and a little bit of a prestige world there so there's a lot to really play with here and really kind of mix it up and kind of give you different you know strategies that you can just you know try right out the gate the other thing here is the game you can see plays up to five players. We have you know uh, different uh, components for five players. Everybody's going to get a basic fleet to start the game. And then actually for an action you can do improved fleet. So when leading or following a research role, and I should say I'm not going to talk about how to play the basic game. I've got a review, there's a lot of reviews out about how to play the basic game. But instead of you know, uh, getting a technology, you can pay three research or three of these little ships. Now, if you remember, in the basic game, you had little ships, huge ships, the big old dreadnoughts, and then also these little battle cruiser looking things here. They didn't mean anything in the basic game. Each ship was, you know, the same. But here, you can see I'm going to play three little ships, and then I can actually flip this over to an improved fleet. Now, what this fleet does is you can see here at the basic, if I pay three little ships, I can get the medium ship. If I pay two medium ships, I can get the big ship, which is also worth two points at the end of the game, and you get minus one to all wherefore costs while the battle cruiser is in play. And you get a little bit better of a conversion rate there, and minus two to all warfare costs while that's in play. So that's something you can do to improve that. Now the other thing uh, that's changed for five players is we've got some more cards here in these different uh, basic card decks. Uh, the rule book tells you, it's got a nice little chart telling you how many to include for which player count. I would just look at that. You also are going to basically end the game differently based on the number of ex uh, you know exhausted piles as well as you know these little blue shaded victory point uh, tokens you get for trading are gonna come into play. Usually they were just there for extra. Now you include all of those as an another timer to end the game. Uh, there's a quite a bit more planets here. Some of these you can see they come with actions on them. Remove up to two cards in hand from the game, so you can do that as an action. Uh, you know, there's just, there's a ton of different ones in here. I'm just gonna kind of let you uh, explore that when you buy the game, which you should. Uh, so there's a lot more planets here. The one thing that is different, you can see some of these are hostile here. This actually costs one big ship to conquer, and you cannot conquer it with colonies here. So you can see this guy is also going to provide you every turn. Uh, unless you you don't use it up. So every turn you're going to get a free ship. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and this one here, this is going to either require four colonies or a full-on battle cruiser here. And this guy is, you collect one influence when dissenting a warfare roll. I'll talk about that more in a second. So there's a little bit more uh, different things that you can happen there. The last thing to talk about here are some of the new technologies. Now each of the trees here, based on the planet types you have, has been buffed up. So you'll have more of these improved trades and, and different things like that in each of the decks. So it's a little bit more fairly balanced. But the other thing you can see there is you also have the ability to pay 
with research or with the three little you know weenie fighters there to get that technology there so that's an interesting tactic that you can take to maybe not really go after research so much but use some of your warfare uh, to get some of those technologies and then so we will see here let's look at some of the new ones here so here's a here's the one i was going to talk about earlier this is peace treaty here so you can see here collect one point when dissenting a warfare role so combine that with the planet that we got there collect one so you could go anti-warfare you see somebody ramping up for warfare uh you can kind of go and dissent that and be a kind of a manipulative peace treaty person and there's one of these in each of these decks here let's look at some others um, here we go spoils of war so you produce one resource for each um, of the little weenie fighters in your empire and this is an action that you can take so you can see you can pay two of the medium f uh, freighters or five research so that can be pretty cool there so um, <laughs> uh, specialized uh, choose a resource type collect one for each resources that type produce that's a little bit and then here's the double time you may play two additional actions during this action phase uh, you can see this is kind of cool because you, you need one of these sort of earth-like planets and then one different planet it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's not another earth-like planet uh, black market here you may discard resources from empire as if they were symbols to boost or follow any role so there's a lot of really cool things in here here's a good one here remove one permanent technology from the game uh, its owner receives reparations, basically two points as a makeup. So permanent, again, these ones here you keep in front of you. So somebody can come along and blast your technology. They'll get the points, you know, at, for it, but they're not going to have that ability. So there's a little bit more attacking and things that are going to happen. Uh, so if we move down, kind of down the line here, just to this side here, you can see here's a little bit more of a, of a PvP kind of thing here. It's Annex. And so attack a face down planet. So a planet that somebody has yet to um, to conquer, you can actually steal them out from underneath them. And then it just says uh, t that player receives two points from the supply. So, I mean, this is a difficult one to get. You need one of each, you know, two mediums and five of those. But this is definitely something to keep in mind. And why I think actually from a strategic perspective that having uh, these uh, these dissenting warfare ideas, uh, you know, getting points to sort of balance against, you know, having your planets taken over is so important. Uh, a couple other cool little things here is uh, I've never seen anybody use it, <laughs> um, or I've never seen anybody use this exclusive victory. No, I take that back. Somebody did do this once. Um, that one there, yeah. So you win the game no matter what. Actually, I did see somebody do that. Um, but this one here, uh, you got some more of these. Your overwhelming influence cannot be nine. So, um, you know, you pay 12 points and then have that. So you get economic victory. Um, and then there's another one here, which is a military victory. Your overwhelming might cannot be denied. So you have three of the big ships there. Um, so anyway, so there's some cool ones there. Uh, what's another one here? Uh, Oversight committee. Get plus one card hand, draw two cards, and remove up two cards from the game. So there's a lot of more interesting kind of, uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, more dynamic and fun kind of, it feels like you're breaking the game. I don't think anything is really breaking the game, but you feel kind of like you're, you're breaking the rules a lot uh, here. So here's scientific discovery. Take any tech card costing three research or less, put it in your hand. You do not need the prerequisite. So it's a way to kind of steal, uh, you know, tech cards out there. And there's, you know, lots of, this gives you a lot more flexibility. You know, this one discard one of those medium ships get three points on the supply so you can see these that you can kind of try to abuse and it gives you different sort of strategic approaches to the game combine that with these you know different starting abilities and it gives the game a lot more variability uh, out the gate in terms of you know the technologies and all the special abilities that you're going to get. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the review, Eminent Domain is one of my favorite games of all time, top 10. This one makes it even better. Uh, so maybe it's a top five now, I don't know. Uh, I haven't done a top 50 list or a top 100 list. But this game is, I mean, I, it's so good that I have a hard time trying to tell you why I like it so much sometimes. Um, now, like I said during the review part, the different uh, scenarios that you can get, that really makes the game. I mean, it really changes it up because before, little scripted, you know, the first few rounds. The thing I really liked about it, you know, let's talk about before the expansion, was it's so much a pace game and you really want to pace, you know, the timing of what when you do things. And I still felt it was pretty open-ended because you got sort of these different 
not trees, but little paths that you could go through for the different technologies. You know, you got a military kind of thing, a colonization thing, you could do a produced trade thing, you know, and then you kind of splashed in different technologies with the research. And it felt very thematic to me in, in that regard. Um, but this one really kind of ups the ante. And um, the cool thing is, though, I want to make sure I say this, is that I think even though I've got everything in the one box, I can still play with the expansion um, with beginners. Now in the base game, you had basically, you could play everything and you don't use any technology. Well, this one, you could just give them a scenario card, give them one of the simpler scenarios, and you give them the, you know, the starting technology card, and you say, okay, just play with that. And then, no, this game, we're not gonna buy any technology, and everybody plays, and everybody's got this cool little special ability they can do. You play one game like that, and then you jump into, you know, throwing in the technology again. So I don't think it's lost with the expansion not being able to sort of act as a little bit of a gateway game. Because I felt like the base game without the technology, that's definitely a gateway game. It's horrible to play it without technology, but as a gateway game, it's not bad to get somebody into it. So you still got that ability, even with all the expansion stuff in the game. So it doesn't say that in the rule book, but that's my opinion. I think it'll work fine. Uh, but yeah, there's just a lot more technology. You get a lot better use out of the military. I like that you can steal planets and blow up people's technology, but you've got some nice things to kind of balance that out with some of the peace treaties and different things like that. Um, and again, you've got a lot of a lot more ways to explore, you know, your victory. So not only do you have sort of your production, your colonization, your military stuff, you've got a lot of more sort of abusive cards that you can really try to drive and that's really going to change the you know the pacing of the game to really you know play a card you know for these different actions that are going to give you you know lots of points or and you can trade in chips or trade in uh, you know uh, goods for you know following roles. So there's a lot more sort of uh, you know Magic the Gathering kind of stuff. That's where I kind of fit it in. Is, is you can really tinker with all the mechanics and and rule breaking that can happen, and that makes it really really fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, even from a thematic perspective, it's like I have my scenario, that's my sort of starting empire, that's sort of my, you know, what I'm bringing to the table as a civilization to this galactic conquest that's going to happen. Um, so, I mean, yeah, so if, if this is one of those, I, somebody asked me, it's like, if you don't like Eminent, da Eminent Domain, would this fix it for you? I don't know, because <laughs> I think Eminent Domain is amazing. I know it's kind of like, it's kind of splits the middle. Most people I talk to, most people I know personally love it. The only people I've seen not love it are people online, and those people are figments of my imagination anyway. <laughs> so the only thing that matters to me is the people around me like it, they all like it. Um, so I think it makes it even better though. So if you are a fan of Eminent Domain, you gotta get this. So I don't know that it would fix anything for anybody that didn't like it. I imagine it might, because there's a lot more variety in things to explore. And I think the biggest complaint that I heard that resonated with me was kind of like that scripted opening and the game does feel scripted I guess after 30 plays or something I don't know I played this a lot um, but you know it I think it might fix it for you but I'm not sure because I'm really enjoy the game quite a bit if race for the galaxy wasn't such a solid game I would get rid of it <laughs> but sometimes you want you just want a little bit of race you know to to spice your day up uh, but I like this a lot better than race for the galaxy that's for sure um, it's much more thematic and but whatever. I'm not here to pick. I like both games. What are you going to do? Um, so anyway, definitely got to pick this up. I'd say this game's got to be in everybody's collection. To me, it really feels like it's a, um, and I know uh, the designer said that he wanted to kind of make Twilight Imperium the card game. And to me, it does have that. Now, now at this point, it, it's kind of gotten to that point where I feel very galactic, you know, when I'm playing. I feel like I'm, you know, the machinations and the politics and everything that's happening. Uh, and it's just the fact that I can go and annoy other players directly by stealing a planet they were trying to get. Or I can I can say, oh cool, you want to do warfare? I'm going to do all this peace tree stuff. Go ahead and do warfare. I'm going to collect points every time you do that. <laughs> um, so it's got that very, it's got just that little, enough little bit of evil in there um, to make it push into that thematic aspect. Whereas before I thought it was a great game, but I didn't push into that enough uh, that, you know, the fangs don't come out enough. So anyway. Definitely pick it up. Thanks.